Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Redneck Computer Geek. Good to have you here. Basically, I've been picking up lawn tractors over the last few weeks and I've had a couple of bad run-ins with locked up axles. I had a uh, yard machine, a hydrostatic. That thing was locked up. That was an absolute bear to get up on. And then last week I picked up a lawn chief. You can find that at the end of this video. And that thing had a locked up axle that wouldn't let loose. And up until now, I've been doing them with come-alongs. Which the problem is, when you use a come-along, it takes up half of your bed. So therefore, you end up having to brute force the last couple of feet up onto the bed. So, I've decided I've had enough of that, and it's time to buy a winch, and it's time to get it done. Now, a lot of the people decide to tell me that I should buy a winch, and I should mount it right directly to the bed, and we should call it good from there. Something like the 2,000 pound winch that I have mounted on my mud bar. But one of my buddies said, why don't you just use one of the hitch winches? I decided that was a good idea. So, that's what I bought. And without any further BS for me, let's get looking at it. Alright, so what I decided on was to pick up one of these master lock winches. In the description below, I'll put a link to where I picked it up off of Amazon. At the time I picked this up, it was about $70. You can get them in range um, from around $100 to around $70, depending on whether you shop around and what brands you're after. But basically the concept is, these winches have an extension cable to be able to supposedly reach all the way to the battery in the front. They also have a remote um, control so that you don't have to sit there and monkey around with pushing the buttons on the winch itself. So let's take a look. So when you open it up, you find the cabling. And this is one of the things that I really want to check out in my review is whether this cable will actually manage to make it all the way from this trailer hitch all the way to the front and hook onto the battery. Because this is an extended cab pickup truck and I'm really not sure whether it will make it. Granted, it is only a six foot bed. And the cabling is actually pretty high gauge wire. Um, I'm really impressed with that. The plug looks to be decent quality and the alligator clips actually have quite a bit of force to them and you know they're Chinese metal but they're a lot better than a lot of other ones out there. Next we got the remote. The remote actually is made out of some really decent cabling. Really good thick stuff. Um, the remote itself, the plastic, is definitely chintzy made. Um, you can see all of the different imperfections in it. It's definitely not a professional setup. But the plug looks good, well crafted. The nubs on the end are actually solid. They don't look to be hollow. They're definitely not something you're going to break off easily. So we'll give it kudos on a really good plug, but that thing is chintzy. I can actually warp the plastic just pressing on it with my thumb. This is the hitch plate and basically the idea behind this is that you have your ball and this goes over and then cinches up on it. Um, this is actually made really really thick. I measured it out. It's 3 16 inch thick so it's a lot more than an eighth which is what I expected. And it's got these plates that must mount into the bottom of the winch, so we'll take a look at that. So here we go with the winch itself, along with the handle. It's got two holes in it. I'm assuming one of them is so that you can mount it and still have enough profile to be able to crank. But nope, that doesn't fit. So I don't know what the second hole is actually for. So we'll mount that up. That'll be good to use. You know, the handle plastic might have been chintzy, but the plastic on this is actually really, really solid. There's a hatch on the side. You unplug that, and that's where your two plugs go for your power and your hand control. 
which means when you mount it, it'll be on that side. So when you look at the bottom of it, I'll pull this up for you. When you look at the bottom of it, you'll see that it has these holes here. And so that plate just goes like that. So, when you go to mount it on, the easiest thing I have figured out so far is to take this, hold it by the handle, set that in and pull up. And then from there, if you grab it and come around, and then pull, that locks it into place. Now the problem with this is that this is all well and good. I can use this, I can get the tractor all the way up to the bumper. But the problem is, what if I have a hydrostatic and it has a stuck neutral valve? Or I have a rusted solid rear on a regular tractor? What do I do then? So basically what I've decided is later on in the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ball and I'm going to cut it off at one inch depth and on the back of my bed I'm going to create a hook that will hook onto the end. Hi right, everyone, so here's the design I came up with in order to mount this to the flatbed. Basically, it's got two prongs that go over the end, an extension piece for when it torques on the ball, and the ball welded on itself. So, once you have this on the bottom, and then you place this over the top, and then it just sets down in. Just like that. I'll probably end up welding a piece in underneath so it sits a little more flat and doesn't quite torque to one side. But otherwise than that, it doesn't move. I'm pretty sure that it should be nice and solid. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna take this assembly, we're gonna throw it on the back hitch, and then we're gonna grab onto that yard machine that we showed you earlier. Hi right, everybody, so first things first. The first question is, is this power cord going to actually make it to the front of the vehicle as advertised? Well, as you can see, it makes it, but the real reality is it's only got about two feet worth of give. So, that just barely made it on an extended cab with a six foot bed. So on an eight foot, I don't think I would have made it. As you can see, transmission's locked up, so we'll see what it'll do. Also remember to put your clutch back in. Well, that's not a very good sound. Well, apparently that sound you can hear is normal. I really didn't think it was at first, but here we go. It definitely is able to pull it along. It's really, really slow. Um, definitely a lot slower than my super winch that's on my mud mower. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unlock the hydro and see how well it does when it's actually freewheeling.
very cool. I'm actually about probably eight to ten feet away from the end of the truck and I'm easily able to get a hold of the steering wheel to steer this up. If I had the ramps already on the truck I could definitely prep it into the ramps. So at this point I would call it pretty good. A um, couple of things that I definitely did notice is that the wiring that's on the end of this that goes all the way up through for power is most definitely starting to get warm. Um, I bet if I check the power connectors up on the battery I bet they're definitely toasty. And I'm pretty impressed. I think it'll make doing the recovery a lot easier. And hope you guys stick around for more videos.